welcome to master gst right now i'll take you through the gst apis the first thing what you have to do is you have to click on sign up and select the asp developer as login enter your basic information like your name your mobile number and email id click on submit and after this you will get an otp you can enter the otp to which came to your mobile number after that just click create one login so they just click on login enter your email id and password to login so this is what the dashboard which is financial dashboard whatever the api calls you are making you can see the customer username here ip address everything you can see here what type of call he is making whether it's a successful call or a failure call everything can be seen here and here you can see the start time and end time also so here in march i made 37 calls if i select it day wise you will get it if you click on all you will get the monthly api calls whatever you made in this month if you click on excel you can download everything in the excel sheet and you can sort it out as per the username so coming to the api uh, this is the GST API page where GST API is divided into two parts public and financial public in the sense you don't need any GST uh, any authentication here to get the details if you know the GST number you can get the details from the public API calls for financial API calls you have to make an authentication call which I will show later for public there are three api calls as per the government as of now which is released in production to for each and every documentation you can click here to go to the government portal here for public api calls you will click on public apis and when you click on view api list you can see lot of api calls here but only three api calls are there in master gst because government released only these three api calls in production okay so the first call which you is using is search taxpayer which is a get call here that means you will get the data from the government portal so here email id is nothing but the registered email id with the master gst wherever it asks for email id you will enter only the registered email id with master gst not your client email ids gst number means so when you go to credentials I will give you two different type of credentials sandbox and production. Sandbox is for testing purpose, production is for live enrollment. So right now sandbox uh, client ID, client secret ID I am entering here for the testing purpose. So uh, the GS number and in sandbox you can you have to enter the GS number which is given by me here. So that is what I am entering here. You, here you can see you are sending email ID in the query parameter, GSTN in the query parameter, client ID, client secret ID in the header parameters. When you click on try it out, this is the curl and this is the exact URL which you shoot from your application also. You can copy this URL and you can paste it in your application and you can trigger the call. So this is what the response you will get from the government portal in the JSON format. So it is saying that state code, state judification, what type of company, legal name of the company, address. So now if you want to understand what is CXDT, what is ADADR, what is LGNM, for all type of things you can go to this website and you can open the search taxpayer and open the latest final version which is version 1.1. Whatever the response you can see here and in master GST will be same okay so now when you click on download attribute details you will download the schema you can download the schema here and whatever the data you are getting downloaded uh, whatever the data you downloaded here and in master gst is same you can download the schema when you click on download attribute details it will give the information what is SDJCT, what is LGNM. So when you click on download attribute details, it will download one Excel sheet and it will give the clear cut information of SDJCT means state verification code, LGNM means legal name of the business. So every time for each and every API call to understand better, you download the Excel sheet to get a better idea about the output. Here you can see LGNM means legal name of the business. 
SDGM is state unification. Here you will come to know whether it's string, what is the maximum length, what is the sample value. Everything you can find it out in the Excel sheets. So for uh, documentation, you can depend on this website for each and every JSON. So next uh, API call, which uh, is public return track, which is a get call view and track returns so here whatever the gst number you are entering here okay just enter the financial year here and enter the email id and i am entering the production client id production secret id to fetch the details here so here you are sending email id in gst in the query parameter a financial year in the query parameter and a type this is not mandatory this is not in bold okay whatever is the bold letters they are mandatory this is not mandatory so here when you click on try it out you will get the response like this so he filed gstr 9c for the month of march he filed on this date this is the error number this is the this is the this is how you will get the response again to understand the response you can go to the same website view and track returns you will version 1.1 whatever the response you can see here if you want to understand what is mof dof you can click on download attribute details to understand the uh, json the next api call which is available here is get preference that means by entering the gst number you can find out whether the GST number, whatever you entered there, those are monthly filing person or quarterly filing person, you will get in the response. State code means always first to two digits of the GST number. So when you click on try it out, so I think I entered the wrong email ID, I am just trying to enter my email ID. So you will get the response uh, in the json like this invalid gst number i think i enter some random gst number let me enter the correct gst number so when i enter the correct gst number i will get the response like this he is uh, monthly filing person which is m for the quarter four if it is q means quarterly so these are the three api calls which are available in uh, public api calls given by the government other than these three calls, if you want to make any API call, those are called financial API calls. So for any financial API call, the first call what you have to make is authentication call, which is request OTP. That means we will request the OTP from the government portal. This is a GET call. So email ID is nothing but the register email ID with master GST. GST user name in the sense whatever the GST number you are entering or your client is entering to log into this portal which is gst.gov.in. That user name you have to enter. State code means first two digits of the GST number. So here in the sandbox, I am using this 411. So that is why I entered the first two digits of the JS number. IP address means your system IP address. You can Google it as find my IP address. Whatever the IP address you are seeing here, you can enter there. I am not going to block you or unblock you by the IP address. Government is asking this for uh, uh, only for the audit purpose. So now I am entering the client ID, client secret ID, which is here. Just I am trying to enter that. So make sure while copy pasting there shouldn't be any spaces okay if you copy paste with spaces you will get some errors so when you click on try it out if that username existed in the government portal you will get the message as username exists that means government is saying that uh, this username is registered with us we they sent the OTP to their register mobile number and email ID which is linked to this username in the government portal and it will revert you one TXN number. In the next call, you, what you have to do is you have to pass the TXN number which we got in the earlier call in the header parameter and you have to enter the OTP as 575757 in the sandbox in production you have to enter whatever the OTP which is received by the uh, government to the customer. So the same details you can enter here which is uh, the client ID, the secret ID, you have to copy paste and you, now whatever if you enter the correct OTP here uh, then you will get the message as authentication succeeds. So whatever the TXN number you are passing here you will get the same here also. So this is valid for 6 hours only. 
but every six hours we can't take the OTP from the customer. That is why government is giving third call request for extension of authorization token. What you can do is you can pass this transaction number in header parameter. You have to trigger this call before six hours, not after six hours. If you trigger a call after six hours, you will get a message is the uh, authentication token is not found. Then again, you have to do the same process like uh, generating the new OTP and validating it. So you have to make this request for authorization token call within six hours. The next thing is if you want to file GSTR bar, this is the calls which is available. So get the GSTR one summary. Okay, so get the GSTR one summary means you are getting the data from the government portal. Here you have to pass the TXN number in the header parameter. Whatever the API call you are making, you have to pass the TXN number which is valid uh, TXN number. So just pass the GST number, whatever it is, your customer GST number, return period, I am just entering some random uh, email ID, my registry email ID. So whatever the date uh, I am uh, entering, so IP address is your system IP address. So client ID and client secret ID. When I pass this, I can get the data from the government portal. I can get from uh, 07 2017 also. So when I click on try it out, I am getting this uh, uh, error because I am just entering some random uh, 2022. 2021 which is 12 2021 latest summary is not available okay so this is how you can get the data from the government portal get gstr1 summary get doubt issues get b2b get b2b invoices get b2c invoices for everything which are in bold those are mandatory you will enter it you can get the data from the government portal now if you want to upload gstr1 the first call what you have to do is save GSTR1 data. Okay. This is a put call. That means we are saving the data. Okay. So here email ID is nothing but the registry email ID with master GST, GST number, return period. You will pass the TXN number. Now if you want to understand the JSON. For understanding the JSON, as I told you earlier, you can go to this website and you can go to taxpayer APIs and select the return APIs. Now, when you click on view API list, here you can see the save GSTR1 data call. Whatever the version 3.0 request payload is there, the same payload you can use in master GST to upload the data uh, into GSTR1. Okay. Now, to understand what is OINM, OIDT, you can come down and you can click on download attribute details to understand the JSON okay whenever you made put call the response will be reference id this is the reference id we you won't come to know whether it is uh, all the data you sent successful or unsuccessful you will get the reply as reference id whenever you got the reply as reference id you have to go to gstr you have to make a call get written status which is under gstr in this call, you have to pass the reference ID and here you will come to know whether it is successfully updated or if there are any errors, everything will come to know in this call which is get written status call. Once get written status call is successful, okay. So to understand uh, anything, you can go to this websites, okay. So get written status call, okay. What, what will be the response here? You can see the response payload. Okay, so next is uh, uh, once you make a uh, call which is save GSTR1 and everything data card successfully uploaded after making a get return status call, the next call will be return submit. That means by using this call, uh, you will uh, submit the data, you will file the GSTR1, you will submit uh, GSTR1 data. So if you want to delete the data, you can reset GSTR1 data by using this call, but you can't delete the data after submitting. You can delete the data only after save GSTR1 data call only. 
and once uh, uh, submission is done you can use two type of uh, api calls to file one is written ebc file this is a post call okay that means you, by using the otp you will file it ebc for otp okay to initiate the otp again you will go to the first authentication api calls here you can see the initiate otp for ebc by making this call uh, again the otp will get triggered to the customer just take the otp and you can uh, uh, enter the otp here and you can file it so for uh, getting the json what you need to send it here means again you will go to this portal and uh, submit gstr1 data whatever the version you will open here you can see the request payload this is what the request payload you need to send it so for every json you can simply depend on this website like that you can file uh, gstr1 the first call is put call here you will save the data and then after that you will make a submit api call whatever the call you made you will get the reference id whenever you got the reference id again you need to go to this call and you need to pass the reference id here to validate the uh, successful of that api call next if you want to download to a you can directly come here you can come to b2b invoices whatever the invoices all these are get calls here just pass the data like email id register email id gst number of the return period you have to pass in this format then these are not mandatory uh, which are not in bold uh, whatever in bold you just enter that and tx number you have to pass it so the response whatever you are looking here you can go to this gstr to a b2b invoices you can see the response whatever the response you will get here you will get in the master gst same again if you want to understand what is fl ttr tr1 and everything scroll down click on download attribute details to understand the response of 2a okay the same way if you want to understand about uh, download the 2b data here you can do the same thing which is a get call just pass the parameters uh, which are in bold you can download the data so for understanding again 2b you can go to the same website uh, for understanding the to be uh, data here get all details version 1.1 so whatever the response payload you are getting here you will get in the master gst it will be same click on download attribute details to understand what is igst and cgst and everything so like that if you want to file gst at 3b also the same thing the first will be put call okay save gst at 3b data this is what the call you will make okay and the for json you can depend on this website what type of json you will use to save the data so like that you can make the offset liabilities okay so whenever you made a put call means uh, uh, after that you will make a post calls and get means you can get the data like gstr 3b summaries and all those things like that you can file gstr 4 also by making gstr 1 for each and every call the flow will be same you can make the gstr 4 annual filings and like that you can file gstr 6 also b2b invoice and all those things so those calls will be something like put call post call and get calls like that you can uh, file the gstr 9 filings also so for, by making a put call you will upload the data by filing uh, you can file by post call like that you can file the gstr 9c also and uh, you can file itc3 by making put calls and post calls like that you can make the uh, ledgers also you can download the ledger like cash ledger itc ledger so all these calls just pass the details uh, from date in this formats you can download the data uh, in the ledger parts also um, cash ledger credit ledger liability ledger everything you can do it for everything you can simply depend the uh, data and uh, schema on this website so if you have any queries uh, you can directly shoot us at the supported master gst.com on this website thank you